ball return to the backcourt is the one we're looking at today. Um, here's an example you'd always see argued in a game where someone passes from the front court, the teammate hops from the backcourt, catches it in the air, and lands front court, and assumes since they landed in the front court is not a violation. However, this is a violation we're going to look at others. In order to have a ball return the backcourt violation, you have to have control of a live ball in their front court. So the front court is the side you're attacking, like the basket you're attacking. And what is deemed control is either A, one team member has both feet while holding, catching, or dribbling the ball in their front court. So that's three points, both your feet and the ball, or the ball is being passed between the players of the team in its front court. So front court, control, slash possession, is two feet and the ball, and you could be passing it, dribbling, or catching it. That's front court possession. So currently the players in the backcourt, they attain front court status right there, two feet in the ball, they lose control, and they touch it in their backcourt, which results in a ball return to the backcourt violation. So the focus of this clip is on the rebound. So watch the player that they have a circle around. We have a shot, which means no longer team control. We lost team control. Player taps it to their backcourt and they go get it. Know why this is not a violation. A shot ends team control because no one has possession. And a tap is not possession or control. As we know, deflections or taps in games do not reset the shot clock or the count because it is not a change of team control or team possession. So that is not a ball return the back court violation. Now we know what control and front court status is. Let's see what makes it a violation. So if you have control in the front court, and you cause the ball to legally go back to your backcourt if the player of the offensive team is last to touch the ball in their front court, and they're the first to touch the ball in their backcourt, then we have a violation. So we usually go by the wording, last to touch, first to touch in the backcourt and frontcourt scenarios, we have a violation. So we have a violation either touching the ball in your backcourt by being the first to touch it, or having part of your body in contact with the backcourt. So that's the line that separates the two halves. So Lowry has the ball, two feet and the ball. So three points in the front court, gets trapped, and then touches the backcourt line. So he's in the front court, has the status, has control, steps on the line, which puts him in the backcourt. Ball return the backcourt violation. Last to touch, first to touch situation. White has control in the front court, they are the last to touch it. Ball illegally goes to their backcourt, and they are now the first to touch it. Violation. Remember this applies to all situations in the team's front court, including throw-ins. The confusion comes when we have a player jumping from their front court, establishes new team control while airborne, and then lands with the ball in their team's backcourt. Why this is a problem? Take a look at these next two clips. One is a violation, one is not. This clip is a violation because they attain front court status and then pass to their teammate who's airborne that last location and position on the court was the backcourt. Whenever a player is airborne and they catch the ball, your last position would be where you took off from, whether that's out of bounds or taking off from the backcourt. Since their last position was in the backcourt when they caught it, violation. And this case is not a violation because it's the exception to the rule, that if you attain new possession or new control while airborne and your momentum carries you to the backcourt and you land there, it is not a violation. And the penalty for all violations is your throw-in occurs to the spot nearest to where the infraction occurred, except in areas that are directly behind the backboard. Now we'll quickly look at interpretations, and most don't have videos because they are very unlikely to occur. And if they do occur, chances are people aren't recording at the time. This one is just multiple scenarios under the same umbrella. During the jump ball, the ball is legally tapped. A2 jumps from their front court, catch the ball while airborne lands with both feet in the backcourt straddling the center line, straddling the center line, dribbles or passes to the backcourt. All these cases is not a backcourt violation because as we said before, if you gain control of the ball while airborne, 
it doesn't matter where you land, you will not have a violation. In addition, it gives you the different scenarios because when you're straddling the line, you do not have front court possession or control because you need two feet and the ball. So straddling the line, dribbling down just down the line or passing the ball back and forth, that's perfectly fine until you attain front court status. Now the exception to the exception. If you gain new team control while airborne and land in the backcourt, we say it's not a violation. However, if you gain new team control in the air and pass it to your teammate in the backcourt before you land, it is a violation. So you have the exception to the rule and the exception to the exception. So now we have a case where a player throws the ball from their backcourt to the frontcourt, hits the referee, bounces back, and then a teammate picks up the ball. It's not a backcourt violation because they did not attain frontcourt status. But here's the interesting thing. The eight second count restarts when they pick it up because the ball attained front court status, not the team. Two tricky scenarios that have different outcomes and it all depends on ball attaining front court status or the team. So you have the center line, two players are in the front court. They pass the ball, the ball touches the back court and then their teammate grabs it in the front court. That is a backcourt violation because they attained frontcourt status, the ball went backcourt, and then they touched it. So last to touch, first to touch. Then there's a scenario where both of them are in the backcourt, they make the same bounce pass, but now the ball hits the front court and they catch in the backcourt. It is not a backcourt violation or ball return to backcourt violation because the team didn't attain front court status, only the ball. And because only the ball did, they get a whole new eight second count in their back court. So team A has control of the ball in the front court when it's simultaneously touched by A1 and B1, then goes in their back court and then A2 touches them. It is a back court violation because it was a simultaneous deflection and in a case like that, it's still deemed as control by team A. So since it went in the back court, violation. A1 dribbles from the back court to his front court. A1 with both feet in the front court still dribbles in his back court. The ball then touches his leg and bounces in the back court where A2 begins the dribble. Why this is legal? It's important to understand that when he's dribbling, he never brought the ball to the front court, which means all three points did not occur in the front court, which is two feet in the ball, which results in that being a legal play. However, the eight second count is still going because they're still in their back court. So if both feet are in the front and he's dribbling behind him and all three didn't come to the front court, they have not attained or established front court position. Thank you.